big uh, space exploration day, sort of, on the program. We interviewed Andy Weir, who wrote The Martian, and then we also have really big news from the world of space exploration, because Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, has launched their new rocket, the Falcon Heavy, from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And this is the most powerful vehicle, really, since the space shuttle system to be launched um, uh, into the uh, solar system, into orbit. I don't know what to call it. The payload was sort of satirical. It was Elon Musk's own red Tesla sports car with like a mannequin, or, or I guess we would call it more like a crash test dummy yeah. in the driver's seat of his Tesla. I would have taken it. He didn't have to send that. I know. Space. Yeah. It's like I would, I would have uh, driven that around. The maximum payload of this rocket is 64 tons, which is similar to five city buses. The orbit is towards Mars. It's actually an orbit around the sun that's elliptical and it will go in the direction of Mars at one point. And part of this launch, one of the really big things about this launch was landing the boost stages of the rocket, the lower segments, back on Earth, which is something that SpaceX has been trialing for a while. Two happened successfully, which we're showing our television audience. One ended up missing its target and was destroyed when it hit the water. But two out of three is not bad. And this is just a major accomplishment. I mean, the implications of this, a lot of times with these types of endeavors, the discoveries that come as a result are not only unplanned, but sometimes unforeseeable. But some of the ideas as to the meaning of this are, number one, this could lead to launching bigger satellites. That's something that's currently limited by the rockets that we have. You could potentially launch a batch of satellites in one go, maybe for the global broadband idea that Elon Musk and others have proposed. This also increases the complexity and the amount of payload that you could send to the surface of Mars or even planets that are further away, further away when we are ready for that. I don't I don't even say if anymore. I say when we are ready for that, you could send even larger telescopes into space. But really, the game changer is when you get the rocket back by being able to land it, your costs yeah. go way down. And there's this false notion that some people hold that when you do a space launch, the fuel is most of the expense and it's not the fuel is sometimes as little as two percent or up to five six percent of the total cost of launching a rocket into space so when you lose the rocket you're losing the vast majority of the money and when you're able to get the rocket back and use it again in terms of cost it, it's just a game changer like imagine huh. imagine airlines right where all of the airlines are throwing out the planes after each flight and all of a sudden, one airline goes, hey, you know what? We figured out a way where we can reuse the plane. Yeah, we can land them. It's a game changer, right? right. And that's exactly what this uh, uh, allows for here. So this is an excitement level that, I, I, I mean, I, don't, I can't say for sure exactly when we had this level of excitement about space exploration, but this is really accelerating a new wave of space exploration. And you've got these private-public partnerships yeah. involving Boeing, and SpaceX with NASA, that it's very, very exciting. So we're going to Mars, probably 2030s. Pat's going. Yeah, I'm going specifically. <laughs> are you taking SpaceX? Are you taking NASA? Are you taking Boeing? I'm in all of the above. I mean, these are all companies that have been hugely innovative. I don't think that, again, because, and, and but speaking of which, Nassim Taleb in The Black Swan talks about this as well. Because the benefits of this type of work are often unknown. We have unknown unknowns. We're going to yeah. learn things we don't yet know we're going to learn from huh. this. Why am I, oh, I, I want SpaceX to do it instead of NASA, right? I mean, no, of course, we should all be working on this stuff. It's very, very interesting and beneficial, and who knows what we're going to get from it. We're human beings. It's in our nature to explore. There you go. And there's not much left on the planet for us to explore. We got to go into outer space now. Patfordblog.davidpackman.com. That's an excerpt you just heard from that, uh, from, from producer Pat Ford. Yes, exciting stuff. And I know there's people in the audience uh, who will tell me, David, we're never going to Mars. And those are the same people who said there, were never, there would never be self-driving cars. The video you just watched was made possible by support from you. Please go to patreon.com slash David Pakman show. You can make a pledge of as little as $1 per month. And every dollar helps to support the work that we're doing, particularly in light of the YouTube ad boycott, which has been really bad.